Oh my god, how does the lamp not understand about YouTube natty or not? Do they not understand if I was accused here? This would absolutely do me in. Hey guys, and welcome to the fourth testosterone update. The main things we'll be looking at today is a potential problem with just general medical testing for testosterone, as well as this accusation, this unfounded accusation from the lab regarding my most recent testosterone results. So if you guys haven't seen the previous videos in the series, just a quick recap is I have eight years of testosterone testing that has shown that I have a naturally high level averaging a thousand nanograms per deciliter. Yes, I have had uh, ultrasound on the testicles. Yes, I have had a CT scan on the adrenal gland to rule out tumors. Now we continue to do videos that look at possible lifestyle factors and just discuss certain things around this topic for men. I think it is something that we should be open to talking about. And I don't think doctors, whether they mean to or not, are not open enough or knowledgeable enough to give the answers that we might need. So let's talk about this testosterone result. My most recent one came back at 960 nanograms per deciliter. There's nothing really remarkable about it except for my sex hormone binding globulin, which has always returned back high as well. The lab has offered their postulations as to why I would have this result. What they suggest is possibly, possibly, they don't wanna go out on a limb, possibly it's medication, possibly it's liver disease, possibly it's anorexia, or possibly, here it is, steroid hormone excess. Can you just picture if someone did accuse me of not being natural and I'm like, I'm going to go get a blood test. I'm going to show you guys that I've been natural all my life. And I get the blood test and come back, do a, a live stream of showing the results. And we're looking at it and below it says possible steroid hormone. It's like, You've completely fucked my whole business. <laughs> Everyone uninformed would be just going, that's all we need is for the labs to come back and suggest steroids. Like, how do you even defend against that? So I'm not a doctor, but I have doctor friends. And what they said to me was, if someone did have a level like this, further markers you can look at is the follicle stimulating hormone, the FSH and luteinizing hormone. And if someone has a high testosterone level and the FSH and the LH are absolutely tanked, then that could be further confirmation or that's the proof that, uh, I don't know if that's black and white, but that's the proof that they would be on some kind of steroid. Looking at mine, I haven't had my FSH and LH tested every single time because I didn't know that. I was just wanting the testosterone value, but I have had both tested in the last test, which I got in, I think, January last year, 2023. And both the values are normal. Second to that, one of the big reasons I started filming this series in the first place was Derek from More Plates, More Dates put out a video discussing testosterone levels in the average male, talking about how a 900 level is an outlier. And I had always been getting near that level. So I thought it would be interesting to share my results. I don't know if you call it community driven or maybe like from the biohacker scene, just this interest in men optimizing their health and noting that testosterone levels across the globe are declining compared to what they were 30, 40, 50 years ago. And the thing that stuck out to me from this most recent test was my reference ranges, which I can't remember the exact numbers now, but I can put them up on the screen. Those reference ranges have gone down to, I think it was 160 up to 800 nanograms per deciliter. So that's telling me that what general society accepts is now a lower level of testosterone. I think it's pretty fucking obvious that people are, or men are moving less, eating shittier foods, and just living in a society where we're not maybe doing as much as what we were doing in the past when it comes to physical activity and eating the right foods. I did contact the lab to get comment and 
What was weird about that was they, they proper brushed me off just saying contact your doctor. So a bit of a dead end there before I wanted to put this video out. I, didn't get a, I don't know why you wouldn't want to comment on that in the first place. Some freaky stories I have heard is the reference ranges can be determined just by getting the average of the other scientists in the lab, getting the results of people that visited the doctors that the lab is associated with. So sick people and as just some bad stories I've heard of how they get those reference ranges in the first place, which would be an interesting thing to know. Some other updates which I want you guys to do as well is start to digitize your blood results if they're not already doing it for you. This means that you don't just have your blood work on a printed out piece of paper that you have filed away and it's not something only your doctor has access to. I think take your health into your own control. Just put it in like Google Spreadsheet or Excel, just so you can keep it and keep track of it over the years so you know what is normal for you. You know if you're improving or getting worse in certain areas. It's not that you have to be a doctor, uh, but just to have that information on access for yourself is something that we should all be doing. It just takes time, but the sooner you start doing it, the easier it's gonna be for you.